welcome back to another episode of HVAC system design tutorial. Have you ever wondered how to calculate the air infiltration in a building? You are a HVAC system designer or a mechanical engineer who are given the task to calculate the building load, especially in a tall building load. And you, you are given this task to calculate and understand how much potentially you have to account for the heating or cooling load, actually additional load resulted from air infiltration. So in the previous tutorials, we talked about air infiltration and what are the contributing factor to this uh, phenomenon. And in this tutorial, we are going to focus on an example to understand what it takes to calculate the air infiltration in a building, especially a tall building, in the summertime in a specific location, geographic location, because uh, one of the driving factors in the air infiltration is the effect of the wind and wind velocity. In this tutorial, we're going to look to see how we have to correct the wind velocity factor and apply that to the air that is infiltrated to the means of doors, windows, in different orientation of the building. My name is Babak, I'm your host, and this is the channel of the world of building design. So I'm going to take you to a presentation to look at this example, and don't forget that the air infiltration and stack effect is a very, very vast um, area, and it requires um, good expertise and there are actually modeling done for tall buildings and it's not something that you could neglect if if you are designing uh, for a very tall building the effect of the air infiltration is something that you have to precisely calculate before doing any high level estimation so i'm going to take you to the uh, presentation so if you like this type of videos or the videos related to hvac system design please subscribe in this channel and also press on the notification button uh, if you would like to see the new tutorial once they are posted. If you like, please also press on the like button and uh, it's a good encouragement so that we could continue to send this type of videos on a weekly basis. Thank you. So in this tutorial, I would like to uh, talk with you about one example. Uh, in this example, we would like to see how we can calculate the air infiltration in a building, uh, which is uh, a tall building, and the infiltration takes place in the summertime. So the example is uh, showing a 20-story building in New York City, uh, and it's oriented uh, through north and a uh, building has 100 feet long and 100 feet wide and that's a footprint of the building and it's a, uh, it has a height of 12 feet for every floor uh, and um, so the total height of the building would be uh, 240. So it says the wall area is 50 percent residential casement type window the, the building has and it has a 50% fixed sash uh, of opening for the windows. Uh, there are 10 doors in this building, uh, which are 7 feet by 3 feet um, in their sizes. So they are single, uh, single doors, and uh, there are 10 of them. And they are swinging glass type door, and they are on the street level facing south. So quite a bit of information is provided in this example which we need to, we need to uh, find the relevant uh, information and correction factors from these standards. So for the purpose of this, um, you know, this example, I would like to let you know that you have to get uh, the tables and information from, uh, from the ASHRAE fundamental standard uh, and also from the Carrier HAP uh, handbook. Uh, where you can find all the tables and, and information that is presented in this example. I'm just uh, presenting some portion of 
those tables and a standard, which helps us to review how we have to uh, make this calculation for the air infiltration through this building, uh, which is a tall building. And uh, we are just looking at the air infiltration in the summertime. So first thing we have to do is that we have to know that the uh, we are ignoring the mechanical ventilation and exhaust uh, system in this building in terms of uh, fresh air that come into the building and exhausted from the building. We are just looking naturally what is the infiltration looks like and the main driving force for this calculation would be the uh, wind and stack effect. Okay, so First, from the ASHRAE standard, you have to find the uh, outdoor design condition in the summer and winter. There's a table you can go and find, look for the New York City, and then from there, you can find the wind data. So this is the average wind velocity, prevailing uh, average velocity and prevailing direction. So the direction is south. Okay, I'm just gonna zoom here. So the direction is uh, wind uh, towards south, actually is, is 13, mile per hour is the wind velocity. This is a historic data you can find in the actual standard, okay? So first we have to correct the uh, velocity in our case, okay? In our case, um, because we are gonna look at the tables for the air intake to the windows and doors based on 7.5 uh, mile per hour of the velocity of the of the uh, wind, then for this purpose, we have to correct that. Then we divide 13, which is our wind velocity in New York City uh, in the summertime. And you see that's a different number in the winter wind is higher than, than the summer. So we divide by this, and this is gonna be 1.73 as your uh, corrected uh, wind velocity for the tables that we're gonna use, okay? So this is the type of window that we had. So it's a residential casement type of window. It's uh, going to be open like this, and it's opening 50% uh, as it was decided and discussed in the, in the sample example. So um, that's a style of the, the window that we're talking about. Okay? And then from the, uh, from the other table, based on, as I said, 7.5 mile per hour wind velocity, uh, we can understand what is the uh, what is the, uh, the window uh, air leakage through the window? Or basically we get the correction factor from here. So from this window in the residential uh, type, uh, so it says rolled section steel sash, so which is this type, rolled section steel sash type of window, okay? Uh, we get the 50% openable area, which is the sash openable area. So we get 0.49 CFM or air infiltrated per square foot of the sash area. So that's, that's the correcting factor you would need to use. So basically that's uh, not the correcting factor. You can say it's a unit CFM per square foot of footage of your uh, window area. So we have to preserve that number here based on 50%. And then we come to other tables for our doors, uh, because if you remember from the example, it's saying that there's a seven by three swing glass door uh, that we have on the south elevation of the, of the building. So from the second table, again, for 7.5 mile per hour of wind velocity, this is the infiltration rate for the glass door uh, so the glass door with three uh, quarter inch crack is a 10 CFM per square footage of area of the, of the door itself. So that's, that's the CFM we have to preserve here, okay? So uh, we have this other number. And again, these are based on this velocity of wind. In our case, because our wind velocity is higher, is 13, almost two times or uh, you know, close to two times of this, then that's why we have to have that, uh, you know, division happen so that we get the correction factor of 13 divided by 7.5. Now, simple calculation, we get the effective glass area. We had, 
we had uh, the glass area, we can go back to the example and see what was asking. So, um, okay, because it's a 50% of our, of our wall is glass, so we have the building as 100 feet of the length. So we have that as 100 feet length. So we go back here in our, sorry, in here. So we have 100 feet of length and we have uh, 20 story, right? And then we have 12 multiplied by 0.5 which is the 50% uh, of total wall area. So we get our total square footage of our uh, glass area on the south side. That's basically the total square footage of the glass area. And remember, because it's, it's, uh, it's the south side of the building, we have to just focus on the south side of, of the building because in the summertime, the only calculation we have to do is in the windward face of the of the building where we calculate the air infiltration. So you get the infiltration through the doors is the same. Uh, you had uh, 10 doors, seven by three is the size of the door. And then 10 is the CFM per square footage of the air infiltration to the door. And then the velocity um, you know, factor that we calculated above. So you have the total infiltration of 3,640 CFM through all these 10 doors when the doors is located on the side, south side of the wall. And then the total building or overall uh, height of the building, we calculated already 240. So again, for the summer infiltration, as I said, the calculation would be on the windward side only. And we know that in the summertime, the stack effect would be minimal. Um, and the reason is that there is not big gap between the outdoor temperature and indoor air temperature. And also the, and the air movement or air infiltration has a downward direction. It means that the air infiltrates from the top and exfiltrate from the bottom of the building in the summertime. The, the direction would be opposite for the winter time. So I can show you the, uh, you know, on the schematic, how the infiltration and exfiltration works. So if this line, as you can see, is your uh, neighbor or basically the border between your outside and inside of your building, the this side, is your windward side where the air is pushing toward the building. And the other side of your building is leeward side of your building, okay? And as you can see, this is the neutral pressure line where at this point, right at this point that you see it highlighted in neutral point, there is no difference in the air pressure between outside and inside of your building. That's basically the gradient of the air pressure. So as you can see, the air pressure is higher on the bottom and it becomes lower on the top as you can go above the neutral pressure line. Okay. So we learned about this inward, uh, windward and leeward. And uh, so for the calculation, as we said, the movement of air, as you can see, the movement of the air from here, air is infiltrated from the bottom and exfiltrated gradually from the top. But this is a winter time scenario where the air is rising due to the huge temperature difference of outside and inside, and consequently the density, air density difference from outside and inside. That's why air is moving. So this is a stack effect applies here. So you have an infiltration in the bottom and exfiltration from the top. But this is opposite in our example. This is going to be opposite in the summertime. It means that you get a lot of air infiltration from the top and exfiltration from the bottom. So that's, that's going to be happening. So um, you get the exfiltration from the bottom. So in order to calculate your exfiltration from the bottom, 
you have to have a net infiltration from the door that we just calculated above. You have total calculated door infiltration. And then C is a total air infiltration from the windows. So we calculated 3,640 CFM of air infiltrated from the door. So you deduct that from multiplication of total window infiltration by 0.8. So it get, gives you this number as minus 4,520 CFM. This means that this much volume of air is uh, exfiltrated from the door. It means that 4,520 CFM air is exiting from the door, from the door on the south side in total. So that's basically the profile of the air infiltration, exfiltration in the summertime. Therefore, we do this calculation. So I haven't done anything for the winter uh, infiltration calculation. We have gone way beyond the subject of the carrier hat at this point. I just wanted to show you that if you need to make some calculation and plug it in your number into the carrier hat, you can dig into the actual standard and make a lot more uh, detail and accurate calculation before you make assumption on the carrier hat. Thank you very much for watching. So we looked at this example and we realized what are the factors that you have to consider to calculate the air infiltration. So we discussed that the air infiltration has a different effect when we are calculating it for the summer versus winter. We talked about the difference in the air density and how that calculates the stack effect and how in the summertime you have the downward direction uh, of the air movement. So you have exfiltration in the summertime from the bottom of your building and you have uh, infiltration on the top and that's opposite in the winter time because the air rises uh, and above the pressure neutral line of your building uh, you have uh, exfiltration on the top and you have infiltration on the bottom. So we did look at this example, we looked at the tables and extracted the data uh, for, for, uh, for the example of the New York City and the wind velocity and also the um, calculation factor of uh, CFM or air rate per square footage of windows and doors and we applied that to uh, the uh, the um, you know the the calculation model and we got the actual number for the um, you know air infiltration and exfiltration. So this was related to the carrier hab tutorial, uh, and actually this was going to be the this is going to be the end of the um, you know air infiltration for now uh, related to this, and we're going to continue with the carrier hab software training in the next tutorial. So please subscribe on this channel of the world of building design and press on the like and notification button. I will see you in the other tutorial with the other exciting new uh, training and tutorials. Thank you.